Well, definitely a late ass start tonight. It's already about 8.40 as we're filming this intro here. And so you're trying to make some progress. You're starting kind of late at night. You don't have a lot of time, maybe a couple times. I'm probably good to go till about midnight. And then, uh, then I got to go and leave myself enough time to edit this thing. So I have a night where you're only going to have a few hours. How can you make the most of your time? And that is something I struggle with all the time. So weeknights when I know I'm not going to get a lot of time in one stretch at it, I'll try to do something simple, something easy, something I can rip out quick. And tonight I believe it's going to be braces. I've got to cut uh, eight more braces for the next set of top plates we're going to be working on over the weekend. Which, that'll be good to get those on. I need to get that done. And then I can truly concentrate on the Queen Post stuff. So, if you haven't noticed, I'm kind of just uh, hitting what I can hit when I hit it. Get done what we can get done when we get it done. And then we just keep going from there. So, I've got a, uh, ooh, about a 16 foot long piece of 4x6 stock over there. Piled in with my uh, Queen Post framing members. And I think I'm going to clamp that down to an 8x8 which makes it nice and stable to work on. And then we're going to start cutting those braces out, see if we can get some of those knocked out tonight. So stay tuned. I'll catch you on the other side of it, and I hope you enjoy it. Oh, shush. Yeah, you know what? We're going to go with the other one, guys. We're going to go with the other one. Let's see... Uh, those bug holes aren't that deep, I just don't like them. I just don't like them. Yeah, I don't like that. Ooh. Well, I think, guys, it looks good and solid. It doesn't look very good, but the wood is pretty solid there. i got to make sure it's good solid wood for the braces. They're, the braces, they're going to support, a, they're, that compression load on those is going to be pretty good. I want these strong. I may bypass this area right here. We'll see how many of these we can get out of this. Then we'll decide what we're going to do with it, but we'll turn the pretty side up for right now just for the camera purposes, right? Another thing I need to do when I'm putting these up there, I'm going to shim that off of the, uh, off the 8x8. You better hush out there, I'm going to turn your ass into hamburger. Hamburger. What the hell is going on with all the YouTube woodworkers this week, the last couple nights? You know, you've got, you know, some of the channels I like to watch, you got Matt Carmona's talking about his Franken box. I had to leave that one alone, man. My, my wise-ass black belt was just itching to make all kinds of dirty and stupid jokes about that one. Tonight my Instagram feed pops up and Jay Bates is watching the friggin' Lion King. What the hell's wrong with you guys anyway? Freaking weird, man. Freaking weird. But, out of the woods, he did show his, uh, Nathan showed his new uh, 461 in action. That was pretty cool. Okay, 
Okay, we'll start laying this guy out. All right, so our braces for these 30 inch by 30 inch layout, they're going to end up being 42 and 7 16 we're just going to move down the line. I'm going to lay as many of them out on this piece as I can. We're going to avoid the bad spots. I have one spot down there towards the uh, towards the other end there. I don't really care for Nathan. You won. We're doing braces tonight. So I was setting everything up when I uh, <laughs> when you popped up on the Instagram that you. I can't believe I'm doing social media crap. You know, I got to be honest with you. I never thought that I would be one of those guys to sit there and do social media not my personality it never was my thing you know I've done a lot of forums and stuff over the years but never was one for that stuff but you know I'm finding it's real fun I said I wasn't going to use this but I do like the 12 inch ruler on it quite a bit it's kind of nice now the 3 8 mark is always the one that gets everybody that watches this channel so important though and for a half inch housing. Oh, three eighths. Well, I got to rip apart a good boiler today. Ripped it right down the nuts and bolts. 45 there. Let's see if I'm right on there. 45 and 45 here. See, you guys starting to see the footprint? See if you can even see it. Get out of the damn light. Yeah, you guys can see it. How about that? I think this would be the first time you guys could ever really see this worth a damn. I'm doing a 3 inch tenon on the end of this guy. Another 45 through here. There. That confuses the hell out of everybody. Don't let it confuse you guys. That one, that's the easiest part. I'm in a real good mood tonight. I actually feel energized. I don't know if it's all the coffee or what it is. Or maybe taking a couple days easy. Not by choice, but by rain. Keep your tape measure, if you can, equidistant off of that line there, because if you get off one way or the other, believe it or not, it will throw your measurement off a little bit. You'll be cursing yourself. It won't be any fun for anybody. You'll be inside kicking the dog. That's not cool. You should never kick your dog. <clears throat> Okay, on a particular note of interest, if you lay these out end to end like I have here, you're going to have to plan your cuts out a little bit differently. All right, so I'm going to turn this headlamp off. When I go to cut this, I'm going to lose an eighth of an inch or thereabouts from the saw blade kerf. I don't want to cut down here first, and then I'll end up cutting this brace an eighth of an inch short on one end. If I were to do it on both ends, we'd be losing a quarter of an inch. I'm not worried that this thing's two and seven eighths long. That's not going to hurt anything. Remember, these are in compression. The weight's going to be pushing down against this face and the housing face. I am not worried about that being an eighth of an inch shy. So just remember that if you're going to cut it this way, I'm going to want to start here and follow that line and leave that line, just barely leave that line. I'm going to want to do the same thing when I go up here and I cut this piece. So just keep that in mind if you lay these out, because if you cut them wrong on both ends, you're going to be a quarter of an inch short on that brace, and it's not going to fit the way you need it to. So I just thought I'd better throw that in there before somebody lays them out like that. But anyway, out of this piece, I'm able to get four complete braces out of it. We're going to run with it. The uh, third brace down, I'm still not sure about that wood, so we're going to see how good it looks when I cut into it. So I think it'll be all right, but we're going to double check. So... Here we go. I'm going to throw you guys in the time lapse and we're going to be uh, termites. We're just going to cut some stuff up.
So you, can, you guys can see we're cutting these a little bit differently tonight. I'm not kerfing these out like I normally do and then chiseling them all off. I figured I'd try it with the circular saw tonight. Now when I actually have room in my little shop over there to do this stuff, most of the braces I cut at first for this barn, I actually did it with a 12 inch, uh, uh, two, uh, yeah, a 12 inch DeWalt radial arm saw and my table saw. And when I use those, I can rip one of these off in less than 10 minutes. I mean, it's bam, bam. Put it this way, it's the time it takes to make two or three cuts. So I had jigs all set up, but unfortunately, I have no room in that shop to do anything at this point. So we're out here doing it kind of the hard way, but this is a hell of a lot easier than chiseling them all out. So now we're trying to make time, you know, it's that time of year. We got to make time. Oh. Now when you're going to cut like this, common sense, so I get a little shoulder right there, I got to get rid of that. So what that's going to do, and that's from when I finished off the cut with a handsaw, because the kerf on the handsaw is skinnier than the kerf on the uh, saw blade. So I just want to zip that off of there. Otherwise, otherwise what's going to happen is that blade's going to want to tip with that right there, and then it's going to throw our cut off. So I'm trying to get away with uh, making this a little bit easier and faster. I actually, cutting braces is probably one of my favorite parts of this project. They're really easy, they're really simple to lay out. I just, I enjoy it, it's nothing to it. So let's cut this guy. Check, make sure you're not going down too far. And I get to a certain point when I can wiggle it around. I take the uh, beautiful beater stick here, the Chris Peter Special. Knock her off. God, I love that thing. So much better. So much better. I know, you guys probably say, okay, we get it, you like it, you set it every time you break it out. Well, you got to appreciate good craftsmanship. Now, I may have to shave these down a little bit when I go to uh, put them in the brace mortises. But what I do with these anyway... So my brace mortise is two inches. I try to do the brace mortise exactly two inches. You know, sometimes you cut one a little tight or you're not quite tight enough. Usually, usually you try to err on the side of caution. You cut them a little bit tight. I find, you well, know, so I cut that mortise at two inches exactly. I want this a little bit thinner. So I'll cut this a sixteenth of an inch under my two inches. And it still leaves a nice tight fit, but I can get the brace in there without splitting that mortise out or having to beat the hell out of it in. And sometimes you still have to shave this down just a little bit if you, if you didn't get your, uh, your mortise exactly right. So I, uh, I had... Uh, I was watching Donovan's Homes the other night. Night ago, or maybe it was last night. The nights just run together for me. I forget what day of the week it is half the time. He built a nice set of uh, timber frame saw horses. If you guys uh, are looking for ideas to build a set of those, even if you're not doing a timber frame, those saw horses are beautiful. We're probably going to make a, a special set of these for the timber framing shop upstairs when this is all said and done. But he did a real nice job on them. It, it was his first time trying to, uh, I think it was his first timber framing venture into timber framing and that's a really good project to practice on it gets you the basic rules of the joinery it lets you practice a draw bore a little bit so it's kind of nice he did a good job on them um you guys ought to check it out i'll throw a link to that video at the end of this one 
get the gangster hat thing out of the way here. So you guys notice that? See that? My wife decided that my other hat was just getting way too disgusting. I mean, sure, the thing did shed rain even though it was a mesh hat, but I like my hats that way. It was well worn in. But she did right. She found another Husqvarna hat. So I'm picky on my hats. They've got to fit right. I like my plastic clip on the back of there. I hate those cloth ones and all the goofy crap and fitted hats, but they got to be just right. So she got me a new one, even camouflage. Now I'll blend in, you know. So anyway, that well, was a good night for only having a little bit of time. Kind of got out here really late. I mean, heck, it was about 9 o'clock before I uh, turned the camera on. And let's see what time is it. 10.39. So just over an hour and a half, we were able to get four braces done doing it that way. Pretty pretty quick, worked out pretty nice, and I will uh, probably cut the rest of them that way. So a few things to keep in mind when you're cutting them like that. Make sure you're not rocking the saw on there. You want a good square cut and draw a line. Just don't draw the line on the one end of it, you know, draw it, uh, draw it all the way around it or at least on two sides so you can see where your blade's hitting and it'll tell you if you're rocking or not. Plus you're still going to, if you leave the line, which you should, you'll be able to shave it, pare it down to that line. I uh, cut these pretty close, pretty tight to the line, but I'm comfortable working that way. I know what I'm left with when I'm done. So anyway, I've got a good stretch of weather coming up in the next few nights. I think Sunday's the only day it's going to rain, so... We're going to be trying to hit this pretty hard. It all depends on what comes up. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's been a beautiful night out here. It's getting chilly, but uh, I love this weather. This is These nice, cool fall nights, even early winter, is when I get a lot done just because I'm just, it's so comfortable to work in, you know what I mean? I, I don't like the heat. I could never survive living down south like some of you guys do. I don't know how you do it, but anyway. Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you on the next one.